Hi, my name is Catherine Wambogo. Have you ever heard of Wambogo apple? It's a Kenyan bread apple developed in Kenya. And as I say, an apple a day keeps doctor away. Here is our story. Before I take you through what we have now, or what a Wabogo apple is, eh? let me take you a little bit back where Wabogo started and where all this came from. It's my father who is Wabogo apple. The apple was named after his name, and uh, that was Kali. By then it was Kali, but right now is called Kalo. So the one who came in our farm and they saw an, an, a special apple and named it after his own name because he's the one who started all these. So he got this apple from the forest where the white people used to plant their, their fruits and he found an apple and he took a blanch and he, he, he propagated from the Kenyan apple from Abadea's forest. So that's all where Wambogo apple started. Then from Wambogo apple he came and planted that is from Nyeri. He planted in Nyeri before he came here in Laikipia and he was doing so well in Nyeri and he started selling to other people in hot areas and cold areas which came out very well in cold and hot areas. So he found a place like this, uh, not this farm, we have another one, then it, come up, it came up so well. So he decided now to expand the farm and came here we are. That was 19, 1999. For us, you know we found our dad struggling somehow for marketing. So we started in Nyeri, as I said before. We found that my, my dad is struggling in marketing and also working because he was all alone. All of us were in Nairobi. Some of us were in school, in colleges, university. So when we were all done, like myself, I came earlier than them and also my brother. So we had to show him, I mean, the digital way the marketing way. So he started marketing it and he found it easy and that's where we came in for, for help. And also we joined him to, to do the right way because you just plant all of them in a, I mean they were so, somehow clouded. So even the fruits itself, they were so tiny and also the quality. So we had to come in and you this digital thing and we are able to get the, the best feeding of the plant, the best market. Like now we got a market in Netherlands that is in Holland and that's where people will buy, they come from. So that we are able to lift him from the local market and also international market. How we got into international market, having been in the local market for like almost five years, we first got to register as a company as a, with the kefis because these are people who are involved in any plants on fruits and all that. So we had to now go to a higher point, now to register the, our fruits and get also the, the, the certificate for all this because the, the, the international market, they need all this process. Then from there, they gave us now, when they came to our farm, they got the quality is the best for international because they have all the, the I mean, the instructions and the qualification for you to get to the international market. So that's how we had to get there the international market because we are increasing the land that we are planting all this and many people in Kenya they are doing so. So we found that if the, all these people are going to venture into this then it will be somehow the local market would fland. So we had to go in and get the documentation for for the for the export and we got uh, cleared with the cafes and also with the I mean the environmental ministry and they gave us all the, the documentation so us parking to to Netherlands it's so easy they come to, to, to our farm and then they give us the, the, the paperwork and then we we export we put them in the 40 feet containers and then they go every week we, we, we do a whole container for someone who's trying to get for international market first you you certify your farm and you make sure whatever you're doing is organic because they, are, they, they insist on organic, they don't like chemicals. So avoid using the chemicals, certify your farm, 
use their biological traps instead of chemicals because it will trap all the insects that will affect the fruits so make sure that anything you're doing is organic so that's the first 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 thing you're supposed to do because they are so specific so when you are through with that then you are connect you you go to the cafes which is closer to you any of our cafes they are everywhere you go to their office tell them you want to export these fruits even if it's avocado even if it's uh, peaches if it's apples you go to them tell them you are doing this speech they will come to your farm they will go through whatever you are doing they will see what is around then they give the certificate then from there movement is so easy you just start exporting currently we, in, we are in uh, 10 acres of land but the journey has not been easy we started at Inyeri, at one acre, where we had planted, I think, 200 plants. But here in this farm, we have seven acres full of these apples. But it not, has not been easy. We have tried, we have struggled, we have, but we are here finally. Because some of the challenges that we have en encountered on the way is one, is getting the land. It's not easy. You need to buy a land. And that's why you had to come this point because however much the land is far, you are, it's your own and you'll be able to do whatever you want. So we moved from Nyeri to this place. It was not easy to get even the 10 acres at, at, at the same place doing the same thing. The other big challenge we have is the birds. We have a challenge with the birds. But we thank God, we share with God because we are the fathers of those, those birds. Because you can see so many there eaten by the birds but anyway we had to to accommodate that before we get there as i said it's not easy so right now you can see there is no net we are thinking of doing the shade net once we do the shade net now we will have solved the, the line of birds so from there we will not be talking about the challenge of birds again so the other thing was a challenge of getting water as you can see this area is semi-arid so getting water is it was a it's one it was a big issue so we had to get a, a land which has water we are able to now to to get to the to the farm we have a source of water here and that's what we normally use here but those people who have water at their farm then that is not a challenge to them so but we thank god we are here so as you continue with this uh, apple farming because apple in Kenya is not so common so everyone would want to eat that apple even if they don't, we want to know which is this. So the other thing, you, you fence your land, as you can pl plant first, then be fencing as the apples go up. So by the time they come to fruit, your land is already uh, fenced well. And also, later on, when you see the fruits are there, you can do the shade net. The shade net are not that much expensive. And then you use the low materials we have in Kenya, the trees, the eucalyptus for the post. So it's not that hard also to, to do the shade net. Now, doing fruits, it's, a, it's the best opportunity we have. Because one, our fruits, they are easy to manage, I would say that. Once, once you plant this plant, mostly apples, avocados, macadamias, once you plant it, you give a, that tender care in the beginning. Once it starts fruiting, like this apple, once it starts fruiting, it is, it's non-stop you go one on one now and then now and then so it's a big opportunity it's not like coffee coffee you do once or twice in a year and again the protocols you're using for coffee in this kenya is somehow discouraging as farmers my dad used to, to farm uh, coffee and the tea he had to cut all of it the whole farm and he did the apples and our lives changed automatically from that point because for one everyone would take fruit even you yourself you pluck this apple you eat you cannot eat coffee you have you need for it to to, to 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 for the process but this one you eat it like this or you make a juice you make a, a apple vinegar so this is the best opportunity for fruit for someone who want to do a bogo apple or because this is what we are doing we have found the best thing in apple for someone who want to go into this apple farming you only need the land and one thing I would say, don't lend a, a land for you to start Wambogo apple. It's so risky. Because one, this tree will be there over 100 years. You can imagine you have a land which you are, you are, you are, you, you are renting, and then the owner would say, I want to build a house. Or I want also to do other things. So that means your vision is cut off. So for you to start Wambogo apple, you need to have your land. Your own, as in it's your own. Eh? Then you do... You only need lard manure and water because it only need water, especially in the beginning for nurturing and all that. Then from there, this fruit will be fruiting throughout the year. 
the, once you plant, it will start fruiting at nine months. It may even start earlier than you think is nine months, but we discourage the earlier pregnancy. So make sure you discourage by removing the flowers. Remove them to discourage the fruiting. Because one, one branch um, or one knot after removing the flowers, it will have like six pieces of fruits. That means like this one, this one has one, two, three, four, five. There was a sixth one. So if you allow these when it is four months, meaning it will break. So just be patient, you get there. Once you, uh, it's a nine month, then you are, you are good to go. It will give you six, every point, six fruits, six fruits. So that is at nine months. So at the end of the year, you're supposed to have, start have eating the, or selling your apples. And it will fruit throughout. When you're done with this, there are some like three stages coming up. Flowers and small fl fruits. So it's non-stop. So you are in business throughout. That's the good thing with Wambogo apple. Not like the other apples, because the other apples will do have maybe once in a year or twice in a year. This one is throughout. That's why we encourage people to do this, because we know when you are invest on this, then you are in business throughout the year. There's one thing I would say about the apple farming. When you're doing apples, the space we normally do three meters from one tree to the other, and also from one line to the other. So that doesn't mean that you not do other things. Apples, you can interclop with any other thing. So in between the apples, you can do other thing in between. But only thing we discourage and we don't want, and you yourself, you see that, is maize. You cannot intercrop with apples. When you put apple here, then you put the maize around it. The pouring of maize, it will spoil the, the fruits. It will spoil the, the flowers. They have all the flowers we are bought. Then what is the meaning of you ha having that apple in the farm? So make sure that you discourage any intercropping. So avoid maize, but you can do any other thing. The apples will cooperate them. Like now we have done even the pomegranate and they are doing quite okay. And also with the, there were some beans we have been intercropping and because of the feeding of the plant, they also benefit from the same. So that is it. On the other hand, now when you think of this apple, uh, you think of, I mean, of big market because the market is there. I said locally is there and also international is there. Now, how to get these seedlings? We have some seedlings. So if you need the seedlings, we have them. If you, if the large use you want. So we have them because it's good to know the source of the trace of the plant. So don't just do the, any apple. Make sure that it's, it's a quality apple because of the sizing. These are, they, they are so big and we don't do hormone. Whichever size it is or the shape, they don't find, they, I mean, they, they don't say that they want this round shape because they, they, they know they need organic. So it doesn't bother the shape. So for those people who would want to, maybe for a generation or leaving a legacy, you can do apple. Because one, you not you do other things on the ground, but your kids of kids of kids will benefit from the apple. Because these apples would be there years and years, years and years, over 100 years. You yourself, you have been gone and your kids have taken. Like as we took a, 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 a after our father, who trusted on this and then we trusted on him. So if you want to do this, it is only not only for you, even for your generations to come. Your kids will come to sell. They will not come to struggle as you did. As we don't go through the struggles that like my father went, he would take the bags like this to the, to the market. In Nyeri town, Nanyuki, Nairobi, like the, the two bags, in a matatu they go. But as we are not using matatus, we are using our own car for the, for the delivery of trees. So the struggles that my father had is not the struggles that we are. So the struggle for now, for the benefits of your kids. So make sure it's a generation, I mean, a, a lineage coming up. And I think, as the, what God meant in the Bible that leave a legacy for your kids. Going forward now, we are thinking of doing 50 acres of apples. Simply because if 20 acres can give us a million after six months, then it means if we expand, we will make billions. And we are encouraging people to do so. Because apples, we import from South Africa. What do we, ha we have it in Kenya? So this is the best thing for us. Now we are at 10 acres, though it's not full, we are still uh, planting. So for us, we want to do 50 acres because we are thinking of, already we have a process of bringing the machine and for there, for adding value. So we'll be having fruits, you can buy a fruit, you can buy a apple vinegar, an apple cedar, and also wine of an apple. So we, have, we need to have a bigger land. So this is the way forward for us. Now from there, it's 50 acres.
That's our story about Wambogo Apple. What's your agri story? Share it with us. Mm, so sweet and crunchy. 